Hello, it's Marikka Nina here and it's API Days Helsinki 2020 June edition. And now I'm going to talk about APEP cycles and how to develop business and software together. But first that life hack that we have asked all the other speakers to share too. So in November, December last year, I had this hunch and intuition that we should go fully online at Osango. So I basically said to our team that we need to be able to deliver all our training, all our consulting uh, online and remotely. And we had done something like that already quite uh, a lot because of customers being all, in all kinds of uh, locations and countries. So basically we just uh, revamped our Osang Academy and uh, we started doing all the things remotely. And that was a lucky break for us uh, when it came end of February, early March when everybody had to do the same too. But hey, so trust your intuition and also trust API of cycles. And I'm going to uh, tell you why. So my name is Marek Konina and I'm the founding partner at Osang Oru. I'm the local organizer of API Days Helsinki and API Ops meetups. And I have worked with quite a lot of companies and trained uh, even more on APIs and API economy. I'm one of the co-authors of API Economy 101 book and also the mother of APAP cycles method. And uh, you can reach me in all kinds of social media and our company to an APAP cycles. So it's not just us doing APAP cycles, it's also uh, our partners, uh, Digia, Tieto, Ferrologic and Vapitea for now. And, and there are quite a lot of other companies using it too. So it's openly licensed. You can just start using it by going to that apfcycles.com address. And it's all about lean and business oriented API development. But who you need to be involving into that process. So this is where it all gets wrong most of the times when people start using the method. So you need to involve everyone. You need to involve the business and the tech in the same time, in the same table, around the same canvases and methods, that is what this is all about. So you can't do it just with a bunch of architects, bunch of developers in one room or a business people in, in a set of business people in another room. That just doesn't work. You need to involve them all in the same time. And this is why the methods have been chosen so that people from all backgrounds can use them and learn them easily. Now it's a cycle, like the name says, and here are the steps of the cycle. So you should be iterating and repeating and rinsing with this cycle uh, from like first strategy phases to prototyping phases to kind of building your APIs and uh, minding your developer experience and everything um, else. So you should really start doing this. And you can even use this uh, cycle before uh, thinking of what kind of API management or kind of API related architecture pieces and blocks you need there. Because this process is designed to give you input for those decisions too, and also uh, make sure that your APIs really are manageable. So the method has been used in quite a lot of different com companies and I've been using it in with these companies in one way or another. And there are all kinds of other companies by our partners and and people who just have started using the method. So the thing is that you should put the APIs in the right context. So this is what the method is about. And this is also what I talked about in, in API Days uh, Paris last year. Um, so there's a lot of ways that APIs can fit into your business model. And it's not just API as a product, but it can be inside and outside and next to your product or your service. But the whole point is that don't just create an API strategy or API monetization, create a business strategy that includes APIs one way or another and get the team, get the budget, get the partnerships and just concentrate on building the actual right APIs and SDKs and everything that you truly need and not just some APIs. So start from the customer journey, start from looking at your ecosystem customer journey. So where are you in this ecosystem? If it's an online uh, store and online purchasing uh, kind of journey, then who are you? Are you the, the company that provides the shipping route optimization or ordering with boys or something else? Or are you the web shop 
owning company or a company that provides the webshop platform. So depending on that, you should kind of take your place and look at where are you good, where is your company good um, in this journey. I will take an example, a little bit complex example from water services. I'm working with water service providers in Finland right now and with Business Finland. And we're trying to figure out what to do with this ecosystem. What are the kind of things that they should buy and do themselves and how they should go about it? And there are different potential customers, different ecosystems where the kind of water services, drinking water is related to. Uh, and then there are potential production and service partners. So of course, related to the actual uh, providing of the water, but also providing of the data about the water. <laughs> so there's a lot of planning that goes into um, construction and, and, and like buildings and networks and everything else and pipelines. But then there's also all of that maintenance and management and quality assurance and invoicing, reporting, all kinds of data analysis, uh, analysis that you should and could be taken into consideration, especially with the stuff in the middle. So uh, collecting the consumption data, collecting the, the smart meter data from the buildings uh, where the water is consumed. And now the question is, what are the goals of, uh, if we are looking at from the point of view of the water services here? I mean, there are different kinds of goals involved in this. So Business Finland wants to, uh, get innovative uh, public tenders in process and, and make sure that there are like living and, and thriving ecosystems of public sector and companies. Uh, the Minister of Agriculture and Forestry has some, some their goals though, so they want kind of a safe and, and thriving water service uh, supply in, in Finland among other things. And then these water services companies, they are more like companies. Some of them are actually companies and not uh, directly public organizations. So you have all kinds of business goals and you have technical goals. And in their case, this is a list of like all kinds of goals that you could have. But what I bolded out here are the goals that they have mentioned and they have. So they have a lot of technical needs. So they have to renew their technologies, but they, it kind of starts also from the fulfilling of the, the new kind of customer needs and also fulfilling some of the policy and regulatory requirements while trying to manage with the resources that they have and maybe improve the profitability and quality of those. So I just uh, kind of, draw this up. This is a working progress with them right now, but I draw this up so that you would understand better what's going on. So they used to have this kind of, we're just providing water idea and they had pretty old systems and now they're renewing the systems, but they, they're kind of having this, we have to go digital, which um, seems to mean a lot of customer portals and apps, like in all co companies. Uh, which is not necessarily the way that you should be thinking about it, although APIs are needed for those too. But actually where they are kind of going with this uh, more and more is that, and where the ecosystem is, is taking them is that we should provide enough and safe utilities. So like collection of utilities, not just water, not just the uh, sewage and like wastewater management, uh, but energy and like all, all the other uti utilities that you need for the environment. So how do we do this and how do we um, leverage data and the partner ecosystem? So there are lots of different kinds of partners that I listed here. Um, some of them I already mentioned, but there's also needs like uh, you need to provide some public data, some open data and interfaces. You need to have security of supply uh, considerations. So, so in case there is some emergency like a pandemic or something else, how do we actually secure the supply of drinking water and uh, who should we work with there? And then here we have this kind of a traditionally drawn customer journey and systems for this. So this is starting to get to the starting point of API cycles in this case. So Traditionally, you have a construction company or somebody who, who plans a, com uh, uh, a construction of a new building, a new piece of real estate development, and they start to plan what kind of uh, needs they have for water, what kind of quality of water there are, what is going to be the consumption, where are the pipes located, 
uh, what kind of like when and where and what uh, water meters they need. That's something that the water service is, is going to come and install. Um, and then the how how the building uh, maintenance guys who who is going to manage the building how are they going to handle consumption data and and kind of estimating budgets and everything and and maybe reducing the consumption and also controlling it with uh, all kinds of smart building technologies and doing maintenance and things like that so these are kind of quite separate things they're even separate um organizations involved in those all around, but then there's the water services uh, provider system. So there's a lot of data, some exist, some should exist uh, in various systems there, but it's quite disconnected from the uh, construction companies and, and the, the other important processes there. So how do we solve this by changing perspective so we use AFAP cycles to change perspective. So we are looking at the construction company side, the customer needs side here, and we'll start with the API cycles method. So the idea, of course, when you go into new customer needs, when you go into new business models, new products, new services, is that you are going to, if you're a business person, you're going to start using kind of your known tools, maybe a business model canvas, maybe a value proposition canvas, maybe nothing of those, but some kind of a business case and business planning. But then if we take those normal di di diagrams kind of and, and inspect them a little bit, so they drive you to think from the kind of end customer's point of view, from the person who uh, opens their tap and sees the water coming out or from the kind of uh, building you know, construction guy or, or the building owner's uh, perspective. And those are just fine, but they don't really necessarily take us to the API side of things or to the, the developer side of things, although there's a strong link with those needs. So somebody somewhere needs to code something to meet the needs of the person opening the tap uh, water or like the person who makes the decision on how to build the actual building. So uh, we have systems that like, okay, there are the providers of systems that are building systems to cater those needs and, and those apps and everything else. So we, we are looking into those guys there, their needs next. So this API value proposition canvas is, is a way to kind of take the customer needs, turning them into more developer needs and then figure out what you should and could and want to provide uh, to those developers. So here we have uh, the value proposition canvas filled out. So you can see that here we start always from the API consumer needs. Here are those needs from the, the process. Um, so they can be jobs to be done. They can be tasks. You shouldn't mix. Um, them with one another but then you can start to look at okay if i were to build a system to do these things uh for the end customers so then what would i need what would make li my life better so we're, we're starting to look at the gains so here are some of the potential gains like all service pipe locations uh near our real estate any extension plans i would just want that data I would want the real-time schedules for the water meter installations because we are a big co construction company and we have this system. We have so many customers that are construction companies. All of those uh, would be nice to have there uh, automatically. And of course, monitor their consumption and quality data and integrate it to our systems. And then of course, cost and quality data, uh, quality of data and integration, these are coming to the pain points. So what stops us from using? What are we afraid when we consider using somebody else's service? And there can be different things here. There can be like uh, cost, quality, uh, technical problems, technical kind of legacy stuff. There can be that it's not real time enough. It's not private enough. It's not secure enough. And here, uh, one of those things is that we actually want to combine a lot of different data. We don't want to just have the water, uh, like the drinking water da data, but we, we also want to have 
maybe a standardized way of doing it because we don't want to invent the wheel every time we need to integrate to another water service if it's a big company that is thinking about systems or a system provider they might have those pains and a lot more so here we then turn into the api provider side so you as, as somebody who's thinking of like what kind of apis should we provide to others or should we provide something to us then you are an api provider you can also just stick with being an api consumer you can just tell um, your partners your vendors your ecosystem that hey this is what are our needs and then say uh, please let us know what you have to provide as api so here we are uh, switching the the kind of hats of the api provider uh, on, on us. So we are looking at, okay, what did our customers, potential customers need and what features are we ready to offer them? So we might offer exactly what our customer needs or we might offer something that is kind of slightly more restricted, like here, non-classified service pipe locations, because actually uh, that's a very sensitive information in some cases. And then we might say that okay we we even give you a way to order we are an api those installations of the water meters but you need to have at least 10 installations per week otherwise it is not feasible um and then we might say that okay um by the way we have this data hub or we are partnering up with this data hub or we want to partner with the data hub and we can actually give you all kinds of other data like for example energy consumption or we're just uh partnering up with an energy company and and we are giving you all of that data and then you can decide what kind of service level would meet those needs that your customers have with like wh whatever you think you are able to do. So this is the, the first guess. This, is, this still all needs validation from the customers and, and from your kind of business model and technology, but this is the first guess. So then we go into what services exist already, what APIs already exist to meet the, these features. So actually we find out that there is a, a kind of Verkotieta piston, which is a public service, which also has an API that gives you data about what kind of um, electric or water or, or um, other uh, pipelines are going in the ground in a, in a location. It's um, connected to lots of different planning applications on the other systems like Trimbles and, and others. And it's something that we potentially could use, although from a water services uh, point of view, there are some limits right now about what water uh, pipelines are there and what are not. But anyway, it is an already existing service. So this could be something that we could use for those first features. Then there isn't a water services order API. So uh, for the installations, at least we don't know about that right now and it's not for all of the water services providers or for these that we are now working with so that could be something that needs to be actually built and then this water meter um, data so the water consumption data so this is actually something that there already exists uh, water meter providers who are integrated to uh, different data hubs. For example, Yarko in, in this conference is talking from Platform of Trust and they have these kind of uh, connections with water meter providers. So you might actually take the easy route and, and just go ahead and, and work with those. But this is already like, this is just the first iteration of thinking here right now. So let's move over. So we have then kind of the point of who needs to be discussing all of that. So it takes all uh, about half an hour to two hours to kind of even a couple of times two hours, depending on how big the, the kind of learning curve is and big the need is, but you should really include everybody that you just possibly can. Business and tech, um, even the more junior uh, developers, but there's a catch here. So the junior developers or very, very technically minded developers, they might see this as a complete waste of time. Um, and a lot of experienced enterprise architects or like software IT architects actually first think that it is a complete waste of time to discuss this and, and to include business in this because they of course know what the business needs. But guess what? 
when you come down to actually designing a new business or new product or new customer segment or, or deal with a new customer need, the IT department unfortunately does not know what the business needs. The business even doesn't know necessarily what is technically possible. Uh, so this truly, in my experience, uh, opens eyes when you have everybody involved in the same room discussing this or in the same you know, Zoom or Teams or something else meeting. Um, and especially true, it's when you come to the actual business model. So this is an, a business model canvas, but it's taken into API use. So uh, I don't go into details here, but you can just uh, kind of start seeing that you have potential API consumers here. So you have that one of those APIs, the water consumption API here in the center that we just identified in the value prop canvas. So the value prop canvas can handle one to five APIs. In the business model canvas, you should typically take like one API or like one uh, kind of category of APIs, but they, the value prop of that API of those APIs needs to be very, very similar. And they have to have the same API consumer segments and um, the, everything the same. So here you start identifying that who else could use this API? Who are the potential con consumer segments? You might have started the value prop canvas with one, but now you take on um, more uh, segments. And then you start looking at, okay, how much of indirect or direct uh, value we could take from this? So, so uh, Marco Seppan and one of our co-authors from Tampere University is talking about the API monetization in this uh, conference. So look at his talk there. And then there's um, a lot of other uh, things that you can, can work out in kind of one uh, half an hour, two hours, uh, just discussing with people around this business model and, and really understanding what is it that we want to offer and how does this make it different? Who are the different or the new con uh, customer segments, API consumer segments that are maybe different to our current business model? Okay, so then uh, there's a lot more in the API cycles method. So one part of course is risk and governance. So it, it does consider much more of risks than governance though. Um, we have other things for that, but risks uh, are there and, and definitely the point of how you mitigate the business risks. How, what risks should you consider? And, and you actually need to think about them on an API level. It's not worth talking on the systems level or something, but API level, because the actual um, risks and, and kind of business impact of, of each API is actually quite different. And, and as a whole, it can be different in different systems and services where that API together with some other APIs is going to be used. So here are, are some of the templates and instructions and checklists that we have in the method. Um, overall, I mean, you can go one iteration uh, in, in one day, um, or you can even, even have the kind of first sessions in the morning and you can end up with, with coding the prototype in, in for the API by the end of the day. I mean, depending on where you are um, in your thinking and in your business, if it's very straightforward, then, then you might go faster. But if it's not, then you might need a few iterations. But anyway, this is designed to be very lean, very quick and very understandable to all the stakeholders. So business impact canvases and other stuff is in Included. And here are, uh, is an example of how to use the business impact um, canvas, for example, that you have uh, that one API that we discussed and, and what are the, the risks of like when it becomes un unavailable or when the security fails or if it works incorrectly, what happens in the business that if these things happen with this particular API. So, and then you need to choose which are worth, uh, like from a monetary point of view, which are the risks that you actually need to mitigate and, and have some technology thrown in, and which are the risks that you can just go kind of bypass and say that, okay, a human will handle that, or it doesn't really matter. And sometimes there are APIs that actually can cause you to die if the data is wrong. And in these water services, of course, there's quite a lot of like their financial risk and their health risks and there can, can be like overall security risks, but not in all cases. So you should really consider API per API. And here 
uh, are some of the other examples. So location and data and systems, this is very relevant to the water services. So the well, smart meters in the buildings are located in the local Wi-Fi typically and in the local networks of the building. So it's an edge from a cloud and edge uh, computing point of view. So you need to figure out how to actually move that data from the meters to your kind of nearest cloud or underneath your API that is maybe public for, for your customers or, or your partners. But you need to um, look at that like per location because there's network issues, there's governance issues, there's uh, even legislation issues involved. So I used to say to people that uh, I learned it in when, when working at Kesko, the big retailer in Finland, and we, we, we did the APIs on the hardware side. And it was really clear that we had all these discussions about like, can you fit Swedes, Russians and, and uh, Finns into the same API? And, and should you do that? And should you like put them into the same uh, cloud storage? their data and actually you shouldn't. I mean, there are lots of reasons there, but regulations are one of those. Anyway, for the motor meters, so you have that uh, kind of edge and, and the IoT hub where, where that data might go first, then it might be from there uh, transported or, or connected or integrated to um, a more public cloud on, and where you have actually the most of the consumers of, of those APIs and those data. But then for security of supply reason, if something happens like a pandemic, for example, you might need to access that data or some of that data only inside the country's own network. So uh, there are different considerations here, but then you don't need to necessarily do, work out everything in the kind of first round. So you can, you can, uh, you should just figure out that what are the basic needs, what are the, the kind of overall picture so that you can actually prepare yourself for those non-functional requirements that usually are very hard to change afterwards. But here um, you can still start the development of the, the kind of API and the API mindset and, and um, everything around it um, with just prototyping and then validating it with the potential customers uh, and then, uh, then doing just enough so that it somehow works and then scaling up. Of course, if you end up just buying the APIs or just finding the APIs that you are basically um, finding with the API value proposition canvas, then you're just fine. Then you can just start using them as it goes. So if you want to learn more, just go ahead and check out the apepcycles.com website or uh, join us with uh, in Osang Academy. And we are starting this um, new version of APEP Cycles Foundation course in uh, 8th of June uh, 2020 in Osanga Academy. So you are welcome to join there too. Or just give us a call. Bye.